Hi, I'd like to give you an explanation about the basics of the lymphatic system. This is an interesting system that you may have not known very much about prior to the start of this particular chapter of discussion. So I wanted to give you this picture here just to show you how this is all laid out. So we have the complete circulatory system that we've been talking about so far, which involves the arteries, the capillary beds, and the veins. This is where gas exchange happens between the blood and all the tissue cells. So blood comes in through the arteries. I guess it's going this way. In through the arteries, it enters into the capillary bed where all of the oxygen goes out, glucose and other nutrients go out, CO2 comes in and other waste products come in, and then all of that blood diffuses or moves into the veins which then make their way up into the larger veins, up into the vena cava. So it's really important that as this fluid makes its way in to the capillary bed, that we actually have that movement of fluid out of the capillary bed because that has to carry all the nutrients with it. But that, in, that blood has to make its way and the fluid has to make its way back into the veins or we would have two problems. We would have a big issue with blood pressure, so blood pressure would drop if we were losing fluid through all of our capillary beds all the time, and we would have an increase in swelling, also called edema, which is just a collection of fluid in all of this extracellular space, all this area between the cells. What happens though in this capillary bed is that only about 97% of the fluid makes its way back into the far end of that capillary bed and into the veins. So about 3% of that fluid gets stuck out in this tissue. And if that happened on a regular basis, we would really be dealing with these issues of swelling and drop in blood pressure because of that small amount of fluid that gets stuck out there with every bit of blood that makes its way through. So let me erase this for you real quick and we will keep moving. So in order to deal with that excess fluid, we have an entirely separate capillary system or vascular system in our body called the lymphatic system. It's usually shown in green, and it is here in this drawing as well. This capillary system, these are called blind-ended vessels or blind-ended uh, capillaries, meaning that they're a dead end, okay? They're not like the blood capillaries where you enter through the artery and you exit through the vein. These have a blunt or closed-off end because these are unidirectional, meaning they only go one direction. And the direction that these lymphatic capillaries go is from the tissues where all that fluid is collecting back into the bloodstream, particularly at the subclavian vein. So what we're doing through these vessels is that we are absorbing or picking up all of that excess fluid, that 3% that gets left. We're pulling it into these green vessels, green in this drawing, called these lymphatic capillaries. And then those vessels carry that excess fluid all the way back up towards the heart and dump it back into the blood vasculature at the subclavian vein. So let me show you how that works. This is a picture of this blunt-ended or blind-ended capillary. These walls are made just like blood capillaries with simple squamous epithelial cells, just the flat, thin epithelial cells. But what happens is that these cells are actually, let me see if I can draw it this way, they are tethered on one end so that as the pressure builds inside that extracellular space, remember as all that 3% continues to get stuck out there, the pressure is going to build out here. And what it's going to do when it builds is that it's going to push on the edges of these capillaries because there is a low pressure inside. And we know, just like with concentration gradients and solutes, liquids are always going to move from high pressure to low pressure as well. So if there's high pressure out here in the tissues and low pressure inside the capillary, that fluid is going to try to find a way into this low pressure capillary. So what it does is as that pressure builds, these particular cells that make up the wall 
are going to, hang on, I drew that last one backwards. Let me erase that for you. Let's get rid of that. Okay, let me draw that again. So this tethered end stays put, right, like this, but the open end gets pushed down and all that fluid goes in through those openings. As soon as that extracellular fluid, which is out here between the cells, where all those green lines are, as soon as this extracellular fluid makes its way in through those flaps, it's now called lymph or lymphatic fluid. And this lymph travels through larger and larger lymphatic vessels that are very similar in structure to your blood veins. And they're going to eventually come alongside, it's in a separate system entirely, right? It comes alongside and gets dumped into the subclavian vein. So at that point, all the fluid re-enters the blood supply. That's going to help us maintain our blood pressure, which is hugely important. That helps reduce swelling or the risk of swelling by all that 3% getting stuck right out in the tissues. And the really interesting thing is that along its route through all these blood vessels, the lymph is going to pass through these lymph nodes, which you've read about, that are filled with white blood cells, those naive white blood cells that are waiting for their actual match. All of this lymphatic fluid has to flow through these lymph nodes, giving it a great chance to be checked or monitored all the time by all the white blood cells that are there. So if anything has made its way into the body, a lot of times when we get cut or we have some type of an injury, then that bacteria makes its way through the skin and might get stuck here or reside here in this extracellular space. But it can get into this lymphatic capillary, into this vessel, and that means that that pathogen, that antigen of some sort, will end up making its way through this lymphatic lymph node and it'll find or run into its uh, match, its naive lymphocyte match, and that can mount up the antibody production that needs to be present in order to attack whatever that invader is.